Talking about the SLA 3D printing technology materials. So the SLA can give you parts um, from a certain thermoset polymers. Uh, the main benefits and limitations um, that are known as common uh, benefits or limitations for all, AS, all SLA material. Uh, the good sides are smooth, injection mold-like, and it have a good surface finish, fine features and high details, high stiffness. The bad sides of it, it is considered relatively brittle. It have low elongation at break property. It's not very good for outdoor use because the material change over time and um, it is sensitive for ultraviolet radiation and uh, it is susceptible to, to creep as well. If we wanna go in details for each material related to the SLA uh, 3D printing, if we talk about the standard resin, it can give you high stiffness, high resolution prints and give you smooth injection molding like finish. Uh, they are considered low cost uh, which can be ideal for prototyping application. Uh, the color of the resin uh, can affect uh, the properties of, of the part. So if you have gray resin, it's considered better suited for parts with fine details, but white resins are considered good for parts that need smooth surfaces. So this to keep in mind, the color of the standard resin uh, affect its properties. It could have different mechanical uh, properties or aesthetic properties than the uh, the other color. Good sides for a standard resin. For the standard resin, it have fine features, high details, smooth surface finish. Uh, it's considered the best economic SLA material. The bad sides brittle, brittle, low elongation at brick, low impact strength, low heat deflection temperature. If you want to go with the clear resin. Clear resin have mechanical properties similar to standard resin, but the difference is it can be post-processed uh, to almost optical transparency. It can give you a really, really good, clear, final transparency for the part. The good size for this material is can give you fine features and high details, smooth surface finish, and it can give you a transparent part. Uh, the bad size brittle, low elongation at break, low impact strength, the optical clarity can change by time, especially if the part is exposed to ultraviolet radiation or sunlight. So this is an example that we mentioned before for a clear resin. Your part or your enclosure will be um, a clear to a good acceptable point. Okay. We have another material called tough resin. Tough resin is developed for applications that need materials able to withstand high stress and strain. If you print a part through the tough resin, then it will have a tensile strength of 55.7 MPa and the modulus of elasticity will be almost 2.7 GPa compared to the ABS. Uh, this material can give you strong shatter resistance parts and it can give you as well functional prototypes especially if you want to go with the designing for enclosures, snap fit joints or uh, or strong prototypes. Good sides for this material is the high stiffness. It's very good in resistance to cyclic loads, so it have a durability in it. The bad sides, it's not fitting for parts with thin walls. If you have a thin wall, then you need to go with wall thickness of one millimeter at the minimum. Uh, it have a low heat deflection temperature. It can deflect on low temperatures and it is relatively brittle, which means low elongation at brick. We can see here, this drone is designed or printed with a tough resin. We can see here why the designer uh, had his thoughts to go which material he used in order to design uh, an enclosure for, for a for a drone because the drone can have a lot of impact and stress sometimes you have a different airflow so these cantilever beams could be under certain loading unloading conditions depending on uh, the environment structure and the operation um, criteria and at the same time 
if you ever try to have a drone when you stop it it will have drop it will have a lot of drop either through operation failure or even while uh, landing the drone on the ground will have a lot of drops so it's a smart choice to go with a tough resin in this case we have durable resin uh, it's considered a weird resistant material and flexible as well it have mechanical properties almost similar to the uh, polypropylene known as PP durable resin can be used for parts that need high flexibility or high elongation at the brick uh, or low friction and smooth surface finish um, this kind of resin is fitting prototyping uh, products snap fits ball joints and low friction moving parts good sides for this material it have high wear resistance it is flexible which means relatively high elongation at brick it have high impact resistance higher than the tough resin even the bad size it's not fitting for parts with thin walls under one millimeter it have low heat deflection temperature low tensile strength lower even than the tough resin so you want to choose uh, depending on your application so you could have a tough time deciding between the tough resin and the durable resin this is a part printed using the durable resin you can see it's holding uh, these mechanical tool tooling related parts uh, it's holding them in place uh, aesthetically it's not great so much but I mean it still do the job it's tough enough to hold mechanical parts in it if you are going with the heat resistant resins then they are very good for application that need of course high thermal stability and operate at high temperatures for sure uh, they have a heat deflection temperature between 200 up to 300 degrees Celsius they are very good for manufacturing heat resistance fixtures mold prototypes hot air and fluid flow equipments and even casting and thermal forming tooling good sides it have high heat deflection temperature smooth surface finish bad sides it's a brittle not good for parts with thin walls under one millimeter uh, these are parts designed using the heat resistant resins so you can see here upper enclosure uh, that's holding certain parts uh, for thermal applications using the heat resistant resins there is as well the rubber like resins these kind of resins give the engineers um, uh, ability to simulate rubber parts that are soft to touch uh, the material will have low tensile modulus and high elongation at the break it is very good for objects that will be bent or compressed either for one time or repeatedly uh, it can be used uh, to give ergonomic features to multi-material assemblies as well uh, similar to packaging stamps wearable prototyping handles and over molds and grips as well good sides it have high flexibility high elongation at brick low hardness it can simulate an 88 durometer rubber it have high impact resistance again durometer is for whom do know is a unit that's measuring how tough or how strong is the rubber 80 durometer is considered a high number the usable rubbers are between uh, 25 up to 90 durometer uh, in value so the rubber like can have a high impact resistance as well the bad side it lacks the properties of true rubber still it's kind of fake rubber it needs extensive support structures so that the rubber will not be uh, relaxing or bending in a certain way uh, that will be permanent after a while material properties degrade over time because especially if the part is exposed to ultraviolet radiation or sunlight of course higher heat more uh, deflection more elongation and so on so uh, it's not very good for parts with thin walls under one millimeter in thickness this is a kind of prototype tire that's built using the rubber like resin uh, I can't tell if this part is uh, ready to go or usable I don't think so but it's for prototyping purposes I would assume 
For the ceramic filled resins, uh, rigid resins are reinforced with the glass or other ceramic particles and it will give you very stiff and rigid parts then at the same time they have very smooth surface finish. They can give you thermal stability and heat resistance where the heat deflection temperature um, at 0.45 megapascal can give you uh, can go up to 88 degrees Celsius. They have high modulus of elasticity and lower creep, so it gives you high resistance to deformation over time if you compare it to the SLA resin, but it is more brittle than the tough and the durable resins. So this kind of uh, ups and downs need to keep it in mind while designing the right material for your application. It all depends on your application. The good sides for this resin, it have high stiffness, good for parts with fine features, moderate heat resistance, medium, the bad sides brittle, low impact strength. Then here you have a kind of matrix to use to choose the right material for the SLA resin. So you have here standard or clear resin. This is the type of resin in here. Durable resin, heat resistance resin, ceramic reinforced resin. Then here we are having mechanical or functional properties. Isot impact strength. This is a kind of test famous for doing the impact strength testing. Elongation at brick in percentage, tensile strength in megapascal, tensile modulus in gigapascal, flexural modulus gigapascal, then the high temperature resistance at 0.45 megapascal in Celsius. So you just go with what kind of property that you care about, then you can pick your material. If you want to go with which material can handle uh, elongation at break the most. So we can see here the durable resin can hold up to uh, 49%. Then you can look at the other properties, which is the closest uh, resin to this one. We have the tough resin, almost half elongation break percentage than this, but it may give you better numbers in the other properties. So, you know, you don't want to compromise one property or over the others because you want the part, overall part, our material to be acceptable. Here another graph that's telling you the elongation and isot impact strength. So you're looking at elongation at break and the impact strength. Impact strength in orangish, uh, elongation percentage in blue. This is the resin type, durable, tough, standard, high temperature. You can visually decide which material to go with. So if you if you want to go, if you if you don't know how to decide between the elongation and the impact resistance, then you can see here the durable resin is the best in both, and tough resin will come after it. Standard and high temperature um, will go last. Then you have some kind of already made, provided on the market stress strain curves. You have for standard resin with this color, tough resin, durable resin. So you can see here stress on the Y axis in megapascal, strain in percentage on the X axis. So you can see here durable resin, the stress that he can handle is almost around 30 megapascal, that's almost constant, but the strain can go up to 45%. So, uh, so it depends. If you, you care about strain more than stress, then this could be the way to go with durable resin. If you care about stress more than strain, then the standard resin giving you the best uh, results and so on. But I can go maybe with tough resin that's giving me in between higher, like medium strain and almost above medium stress and so on. Choosing the right SLA resin. You have here standard resin, tough resin, high temperature, durable. This graph is a different representation of the properties for the 3D printing using SLA and the properties um, and the types of resins or materials that you can go through for this 3D printing technology. You can see here, if you care about impact strength, then the durable resin do the best results. If you care about the temperature resistance, then the high temperature uh, resin is the best way to go where it's still above medium for flexural modulus and tensile modulus. Um, 
If you care about tensile strength, then the standard resin is the way to go, where it still have um, a little bit above medium of flexural modulus and tensile modulus, and so on. Just you look at these curves, if you want to have visual fast, visual fast uh, decision on which material to go for your specific application.